Um, okay. So we should start. All right. Yeah, you want to just... Wait. Do you want to start? You want to start? You go. You go. <laughs> no, no, you go. I was going to say, yeah, let's just do an introduction. Yeah, go. Okay, let's, we'll cut. Hello, welcome to the VDL uh, Week Zero Power Rankings. I believe that this is is this Season 5, Goomer? I believe so. Season 5, VDL uh, Week Zero Power Rankings. Uh, I'm Sakimoto24. I'm, I'm part of the Draft League. Um, I'm the Tyrant of Tartar Sauces, and Goomer22 is here with me. He is the Bolton Bashers. Uh, we kind of we, we went through all the teams. We did a very quick analysis, um, gave some ratings to these teams. We rated you on um, Synergy versatility threat level and then overall um rating so um yeah we rated all all 24 teams um and you know week zero power rankings what do they really mean who knows but they're fun so we thought we would do it um yeah goomer did you, you want to hop into this or have anything else to say before yeah we do it? Yeah, I mean, I just, I just want people to remember, like these are, I mean, these are arbitrary ratings. These are our, our opinions, and um, you know, obviously, we didn't draft these teams, so we didn't know what your ideas were going into it. So you may have some secret, secret texts uh, that we don't know about, and uh, I guess if you do, you know, that that's good because we don't see them. <laughs> yeah. So you'll give us some surprises. Exactly, and I think uh, so. I mean, we were. Me and you were in a, a multi battle league, and we had the second worst rated team in the week zero power rankings, and we did extremely well. So, uh, you know, don't take it to heart if your team isn't the best. Uh, but if your team was ranked really high, you know, good for you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I guess we just we hop into it now. Yeah, let's jump into the first team, and uh, and we're we're starting with uh, um, num- the, the number twenty four ranked team here. This is the Sting Liquor or Bombi. Um, we did rank them as the 24th team. Um, now, something I will say about this team, it was very hard to rank this team. It was very hard to uh, give them scores on, on, on some of the tools they have because, well, I know Batista, he, he, he goes for those monotype teams, and it's really hard to, to draft a monotype team that is going to get a really high rating. That's just how it is because it instantly docks you on versatility and synergy. Um, it just... It narrows what your team can do just off the bat. Now, what I will say is for a monotype team, this team is really good. Uh, but as far as you know, just a, a draft team where you're drafting all sorts of types that can cover each other's typings, this is just not going to add up to it. Um, also, something I'd like to say is that we're not rating any of these teams based on the coaches. If, it, if that were the case, I might rate Batista a little higher because I know he's just a really good player, um, and I'd personally be scared to face him. So... Um, but being that he's mono poison, I mean, he just has all his Pokemon are weak to psychic except for, uh, I think slow King and, um, Skuntank. Then obviously a ton of them are weak to ground type. What he does have going for him though, is he has a scary Nugget Adele. He has, uh, Crobat is a reliable fake out or, uh, not fake out setter. It's, he's immune to fake outs. So he's a reliable tailwind setter. Amoongus is obviously horrible to deal with. Um, I think Salazzle has some sneaky stuff going for it and is very powerful. So I gave him a, we gave him a C plus on synergy. Um, because we did feel like it, it does have some combos that it can use. Right, Goomer? Right. I mean, he, he's clearly got some, some strong stuff here. You know, he can, um, he, he can go to Tailwind, like you said, and, uh, but like, there are obviously better, basically there are better mons that could be paired with all of these mons. Um, you know, I don't. I don't see any of these, um, you know, where you'd want to turn their ability off necessarily, but like with wheezing, like that's kind of more defensive. Um, you know, you've got uh, you've got clear body tentacle, but you know, what can you necessarily do with that? You know, there, there's basically there's better stuff you could pair with this, and the fact that he had to go poison um, kind of forced him to to you know, pick mons that don't synergize as well. And, you know, he doesn't have a switch-ins. He's got three water types here. He's got a lot of poison types. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't have as many switch-ins for, for a certain type of attacks. So I think uh, I think in terms of, of synergy, he's going to have to get really creative with what sets he brings. And I, ex- I expect a, a big season out of Batista. I think this is, uh, I mean, it's a mono poison, and we are ranking you the last team, but I know Batista is going to pull out some wins and is going to be a, a feisty player. Um, yeah, th- uh, yeah. It looks like a really fun team for sure. 
Threat level we gave a B plus. Um, does have some threats on his team. I mean, Amungus is not an offensive threat necessarily, but Spore is really annoying. Naganadel, uh, Salazzle really really threatening. I mean, Tentacle can be threatening, and, and Crobat's really fast. Um, I, it's it's really not a bad team, honestly. Um, and that's something I will say about all these draft teams. It was really hard to actually rank them one through twenty four because like the distance between the like the number one team and the 24th team is not that much. Like they could, the 24th team could easily beat the number one team. I mean, it's, there are a lot of good drafts. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we, you know, versatility, we gave it, we gave Batista a C plus, um, just not very versatile being a mono poison team, but for being a mono team and for being mono poison, it is pretty versatile, but overall as a draft team, you know, just being a mono type team, um, it's just hard to get a really good versatility rating. And so, I'm sure Batista understands. Um, overall, B minus, not a bad team. Uh, let's hop into the next one, Goomer. Yeah, so this is the Killed Air Crocodiles. Um, so right off the bat, you can see that they have some, uh, you know, a rain mode, and that rain can protect some of their uh, some of their mods like Ferrothorn, who really doesn't like uh, being hit with with fire type attacks, or um, or even the Magnazone, who doesn't like being hit with fire type attacks. Um, He's also got uh, a hail setter, and although he doesn't have a slush rush user, you know they got the Jinx. Um, I think uh, I think in general too, like um, not just the fact that they have a rain mode, but I think Pelipper Ludicolo is a really interesting one. You know, Ludicolo's got fake out. Um, Pelipper uh, is flying. Like neither of these water types are weak to grass either, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and he's got an electric switch in with uh, with Amolga, who's immune to uh, electric. And he's got, you know, a trio, who's also immune. Um, plus uh, Heliolisk, who, who likes to utilize weather. Uh, he's got some weather abilities. Um, however, I think uh, in terms of threat level, um, besides the rain mode, which people may be able to prep for, there's no Amon that kind of hits the ground and immediately is, is, starts... You know, being threatening, um, possibly Galarian Zapdos. Um, although its its base speed is um, is a hundred, which is which is pretty fast. Uh, you know, for draft. Um, but I, I I think that some of these mods are a little bit slower or or just um, not as threatening um, without you know a setup or a combo essentially. Um, and so so if you, if you you know if teams might can manage this rain mode, it might not be as threatening. Uh, and and. That's why also with the versatility, it kind of looks like um, the, the crocodiles are leaning into this rain mode a little a little much here. Um, they also have three steel types with Dugtrio, Magnazone, Ferrothorn. They've got um, the obviously the rain mode, the two water types, two two uh, ice types, uh, three electric types with Magnazone, um, Heliolisk, and Emolga, um, three flying types with Zapdos, uh, Pelipper and Emolga. Um, that may have been why it was tough for me to find a flying type. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, I just think that the uh, there's a lot of repeat typings, and that and we you know we docked the uh, the Rabombies for it a little harder. But um, it's uh, there's a lot of repeat typings. It seems like the rain modes is being le- leaned into a little much, which I mean it helps the synergy, but it just you know if, if teams are able to prep for that, it could prove tough. Um, so. That's that's kind of why we have these ratings, um, and I think it. Uh, I, don't know, I, I think I think I think it could be interesting though. I, I like a lot of these bonds. Yeah, I'm a, personally I'm a huge fan. I thought Magnuson was a really sneaky pick. Um, like I think it's a very it was a sort of a sleeper, um, and then I really like Galarian Zapdos, especially in this in this uh, no Dynamax format. I think it could be like really really good. So. Um, all right, good looking team. Let's move on. Yeah. All right, Irish Incineroars. Um, what I will say about this team is they have a pretty nasty threat level. As we gave them an A minus here, um, mainly because of the Blacephalon can do a ton, and then the Dracovish. I mean, they are just so like you have to prep for those mons because they will just wipe your team if you don't. Um, Togekiss is also super good. Sigilyph is sneakily really good. I'm a huge fan of Pangoro, actually. I know it's not like the best mon, but that's one of my favorite Pokemon. So I hope, I, Incineroars, I hope you do some cool stuff with uh, Pangoro because I love Panda Boss. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm really sad that he took Magneton because I wanted Magneton really bad. So uh, what I will say about this team is, um, I mean, we gave versatility B-, minus, which isn't, I mean, obviously you could have a worse score. It, it There's some things, like, I guess it offensively, well, actually it's pretty, it is decently well-rounded. I mean, the only trick room setter you have is uh, you have to go with Soul Rock or Sigalif if you want to set Trick Room, and then again, like your Trick Room mode's not super strong. You can go your Tailwind mode. I, th- mode is I think uh, um, I think Galade actually gets Trick Room too. Oh, you're but right. It does. It does. Th- but, but again, those are all three psychic types. You know, this is sort of yeah. this sort of a similar story with the three psychic types, um, and I think the three, the, fighting, the three types fighting types too. Yeah, Pangoro, Heracross, and Galade. You know, that doubling up. Um, I think. I think this team is uh, a little bit more about um, what synergy could have been there. Actually, that that it seems like is kind of being underutilized here. Um, so, yeah, it, like 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 for example, the Venusaur. You know, Venusaur pairs really really well with Sun. And although you have some you know po- Pokemon who can set Sunny Day here, you know, in a non Dynamax format, um, you're not just gonna be able to set off a Max Flare with Buslephalon. Or with a Togekiss Heat Wave, you know, you actually have to use Sunny Day and run that as a slot if it's not an ability. So I think um, yeah. missing out on a Sunsetter on this team, especially when you have mods like Soul Rock, which I don't know how much Soul Rock really adds here besides you know being a Rock type. Um, and I think so missing out on a Sunsetter there, which would also help with Cephalon. Missing out on a uh, a Sand Rush user or sorry a Sand Setter, which to help Dracovish. Um, and then, yeah, just some of the repeat typings here, uh, with, you know, like the three psychics, the, um, the three fightings, um, and then, I mean, yeah, I mean, the other thing is you, uh, you, they could have got a telepathy user for Blacephalon with, for yeah, mind blown. That was the other thing, um, yeah. Right, you know, um, you know, you, you could have thrown, like, you know, Colossal if you wanted a rock type on there, which I don't know if they're in the same tier, but... Um, I mean, Colossal Blacephalon is, is still a really interesting combo that, that would have been uh, neat. But I think ultimately, you know, you got Togekiss Redirection and you've got some nice, um, uh, you know, hard hitters. But the overall synergy, um, I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I think this team could do very well. And it, it, even with like a, just a couple minor trades, it could be like... a very very high rated team uh I, I expect them to do well uh, i do like the fact that i mean if prepping for this team i have no idea who they're gonna bring i mean they could bring any 10 of these pokemon every week so um yeah overall uh we give you a b minus and uh i expect good things out of this team next team goomer the bolton bashers that's me i'll go ahead and uh you can say something at the end but i'll go ahead and review your team since uh i mean you you had a draft plan you already know all about it um, and, and it's sure. kind of unfair to rate yourself. So I rated Goomer's team a uh, B minus overall. Um, I know Goomer's a fantastic player because we played together forever. And obviously he was last year's champion, or last not last year's, but last season's champion. Um, I think Entei is an incredible Pokemon in draft. It's maybe the best fire type, depending on what you're looking for. I think as far as versatility, it's extremely good. It has inner focus. It has defensive tools. It has offensive tools. It's great stats, great speed tier. Um, I really like that. And then being able to protect it with a Storm Drink or Dilly gives it some good synergy. But other than that, I don't see a whole lot of synergy here. You you're, you're, you don't really have a super strong Trick Room mode, and it's unreliable to set up. Uh, Tailwind with uh, Latias could be really really good. Uh, I know Bolton can do some stuff. You are the Bolton Basher, so hopefully the mascot does well. Um, you've got some other tools on your team. It's kind of – I know you have a plan um, for this, but if this was just – anyone's draft team I, I i there's just i could see a lot more potential with other picks um i mean but you do have a lot of tools on the team so uh I, that's why the versatility wasn't a i mean you have fake out you have intimidate you have inner focus you have the storm drain like i said you have tailwind you have trick room you have spread moves you have um a lot of different typings um a lot of different coverages so obviously i think we all expect uh boltons to do you know bolton bashers to do well but um Goomer, anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really go in with a draft plan. I started with Ente. I started with Creelia. I thought it paired well, and I kind of just went from there. I, I knew I was going to grab Bolton. I knew I was going to grab Galarian Stunfisk. 
Um, there's some. There are two of my favorite mods. <laughs> um, so so kind of had to incorporate those, um, and w which did make it a little tough. But I I uh, I wanted to try out some different mods too in in draft. Um, uh, I, I really like Hitmontop. Um, and so yeah, I just, I just kind of picked some mods I wanted to try out. I tried to get a variety of types and a variety of you know speeds and and so so um, I get the you know the versatility there. Um, and uh, yeah, so having some more immediate threats might have been more helpful. Um, I mean, obviously we'll see how it goes during the season, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting just trying out this new meta um, and this new uh, you know series ten no. No Dynamax. Um, it'll, be, it'll be it'll be a learning curve. So I, so I kind of wanted just a lot of different uh, stuff to work with here. Which uh, yeah yeah I think I think, the, I think the B minus is fair. I think you definitely have stuff to work with, and I I mean going up against your team is hard to know what to prep for really. So um, all righty, let's move on, Goomer. All right, so we got Dilfu here, and I, I'm not. Uh, I think they said that they sort of rolled some dice on some of these picks. Um, which is uh, kind of interesting that they ended up with uh, th this squad, which I think is really interesting. Um, I think the uh, the synergy uh, there's there's a couple things right. You've got you've got Marowak, Alolan, and Lightning Rod, which you can pair next to you know uh, either of the flying types there, uh, the Tornadus or the Celesteela, as along with the uh, Kingler, um, and then uh, you know. You've got uh, the the thing is this team looks a little bit um, stally and uh, slow. Besides, like the Porygon Z, however, um, the reason the threat level isn't higher is because I think Porygon Z uh, benefited a lot from uh, Dynamax, and so without Dynamax, I'm not sure how threatening it will be. Obviously, Marowak Alolan is still a little bit scary, um, but it, it is slow and. Uh, you'd have to set up Trick Room with either you know Porygon or, or Mesprit, yeah. which I don't know how consistent that'll be, um, considering it could be faked out and taunted. And um, uh, I mean, I mean, Kingler Sheer Force can also be strong, but again, it's kind of slow. So that's where like the the threat level is C plus because you have to get some of these mods going. You either have to get them speed control, which doesn't look like there's a super consistent way to get that here. Or uh, you have to start getting some mods boosts, like Celesteela, you know, get some of those beast boosts off, and then, uh, you, you know, you've got some some really strong threats out there. Um, versatility, again, I think it's I think it, this this team might play a little slow, and so it, it might not be as versatile. I mean, there's uh, I do I do like all the mods on here, um, but just in terms of um, this squad compared to the other uh, draft teams, I think. It's a little less versatile, um, but feel free to prove us wrong. And um, you know, I, I, I love again, like I said, I love a lot of these mods. I've used Registeel, I've used Type Null, I've used Celesteela, I've used Tornadus last season. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to need to see what this team has in store to to be able to judge it more accurately. But but as of now, I think it's a B minus, and I think it needs to be uh, you know just shown that it's uh, it can perform. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, overall this team does have a, a lot of threats. I think where the low threat level comes from is actually just not immediately recognizing the support for these threats. Um, right. And so, yeah. But overall, um, again, another just good-looking team, a team that it's going to be hard to face. Um, by the way, Goomer, what, what number are we at? We haven't been mentioning numbers. Are we at... Is this... So... This is number 20. So this is 20, okay. So we're moving on to 19. Number 19, we have the St. Lucie Lux Rays. Um, oh, wait, why did I go back? What happened? I don't know why I did that. All right, we're on the St. Lucie Lux Rays. So um, they got a B- minus overall, but, but looking at this team, I'm actually a huge fan. Um, Serena, I think, is a top-tier Pokemon in this format. I love using Serena. I think Inteleon's actually sort of a sneaky pick because it's just really fast, especially when paired with Serena. You can't be faked out. Um, I, I really like that combo. I think he has a nice different group of typings as far as his big threats, like like Serena, Dragalge, um, Rotom, Metagross, and Inteleon. They hit a lot of different Pokemon. Um, they got a good balance of physical and uh, special. You know, he's got bulk, he's got speed, um, a lot of versatility there. Um, 
Now, as far as the Pokemon kind of on the on the back half of the draft um, or the lower tiers, uh, Hitmonchan's a good pick. It, it gets Fake Out. It gets a lot of you know Iron Fist, a lot of punching moves. Tauros, you have Intimidate. Um, Zato, I think, is actually sneaky because I believe it gets Trick Room and Tailwind. Um, and there's just some other sneaky stuff you can do. I actually really like Zato. Um, but I don't think Sableyes is good in this format. Um, I don't know how good Mr. Mime will be. I actually don't know a lot of the things that Mr. Mime can do. Um, I think it gets Filter, though, and that's a good ability. Um, and then, like, really your only speed control is from Zatu or, like, Quash Sableye. And I don't know... I mean, those are things that are very counterable. So it's hard to... Like, looking at this team, I mean, they, they're hard to go up against because they're versatile and they have a lot of big threats. Um, but... I mean, they're just. I feel like there's. It's a little like top heavy as far as, as, far as threats go, I guess. Um, I don't know, Goomer, anything to add? No, I, w- I would definitely agree with that analysis. It, it does seem a little top heavy. Um, I think with the synergy, too. I mean, th- like, like, like you said, like there are a lot of good uh, individual mons here. I, I think specifically looking at the le- like the left side here, um, like that Inteleon, Serena, Metagross, Rodom, uh, I, I think those are really a solid four and you could probably bring those to those four to every match and do pretty well um but i think they're just kind of good individually i think um you know with, with the synergy like you have sableye you have prankster weather but there's no weather abusers here um so i think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity um and then uh i mean i, I mean yeah i i, I think there are some there are some fun mods. It's a little top heavy, and uh, um, I think I'm still I'm still interested to see what the Lux Rays will, will have in store for us. Though I know they bring some very creative sets sometimes, and so um, it should be should be fun to watch. I'm excited to see what this team can do, and I know um, I don't know they they have a lot of tools. Um, we'll see. All right, next team. I'm, I'm a big fan of this team, by the way. I, I just, there's just there are just we couldn't justify putting it higher. Um, all right, Hidden Leaf Grim Snarls, Goomer. So this team is uh, is pretty interesting. They they really lean into the sand mode, as you can see. Um, they've got the uh, Gigalith paired with either Excadrill or Dragazolt, which is which is pretty interesting because um, you know they can cover some of the threats for each other. Uh, you know, obviously Fairy is good against Dragazolt, but Excadrill is good against that. Um, and then water is good against Excrejo, but Drake's ults, you know, covers for that. So um, they do cover each other a little bit, which is which is pretty neat. Um, I like that synergy. Um, obviously, just sand in general uh, uh, provides good synergy for them. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, redirection, um, coaching, some good switch ins. Um, I think in terms of threat level, obviously of the immediate sand mode, Grim Snarl is pretty threatening. Uh, you, you do have Espeon, who has you know high special attack, uh, and, you know can hit the field and pretty fast. So you do have to account for that. Um, and then uh, even even Super Luck Unpheasant, you know can can throw off some big crits. Uh, so you can't you can't uh, discount that either. Um, <clears throat> in terms of versatility, uh, it looks like the you know the the sand mode is a, is a, kind of the main the main mode here. And although the sand mode itself is a little bit versatile. Um, I feel like, you know, some of the other modes, uh, could have been better. Um, you know, the, the, uh, um, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like it, I feel like it just, uh, just could have been, um, been more utilized here. You got, you got two water types, two grass types, um, and then um, a couple flying types here. So, uh, I mean, overall, I'd say it's a B. It, it's still a really scary team for sure. Um, let me see if I have anything on I, this. I do like, what I do really like is obviously you can, I mean, I used Sam mode my first season is when I picked up Toots team. Um, and I had extra, yeah. I had extra Jill Titar and Drake Zolt, and I actually really liked using those, uh, which were Pokemon that I had like really not used much before using that team and I had a lot of fun with it and they were really strong what I do like is that being that extra drill with those three with the little the little sand trio there they're all weak to ground I really like that this team picked up a Verizian picked up and then picked up a um, Unpheasant and Mantine to, to, to cover for those ground uh, 
threats or those you know they were the nice ground switching so i really do like that 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 was done um yeah i don't know it's like i don't know whether this team's gonna if this team could you know have a bad season or this team could just pop off I, it's really hard to say looking at it i think i think the other thing um the other reason i i, I you can check my notes here I, we had 24 teams i uh <laughs> can't remember everything um is this team is a little bit intimidate week um uh, you know, their, their main special threat is Espeon. Um, I mean, obviously, like, Mantine and uh, um, Swampert can go special, but they don't hit super hard, um, you know, without a Life Orb or something like that. So I think I think this team is uh, a little bit too Intimidate weak and, and leans a little heavy on that side, and that's why the versatility is, is a little bit lower as well. Yep, so... Uh... That is number. Uh, what number are we on, Goober? Oh geez, I gotta check. I keep again. forgetting my my memory is that of a, a gnat. It's bad. It's uh, bad. let me see. I need ADD medicine. <laughs> I, uh, here, let me let me. I'm you know, a, you know what? I'll just. I'm a little I'll, surprised. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm a little surprised to not see the the hidden leaf, getting the nine tails. I'm a little surprised not to see that. Instead, uh, I guess they're they're going with the more. Uh, more sand heavy team, more more Gara kind of jutsu team, but um, that was eighteen. That was eighteen. 18. Okay, so yeah. moving on to seventeen, uh, we have the Aussie Arcanines. Um, I oh, there's the nine tails right there. Um, I think this team is definitely one of the more threatening team teams in the league. Just I mean, not even just looking at like Reggie Lucky. I mean, obviously Reggie Lucky up front puts on so much offensive pressure. Like if you if you don't prep for Reggie Lucky, I don't know why. I don't know what you're thinking. If you're going up against a team with Reggie Lucky, you're not prepping for it. That thing can just destroy. Um, and it can create opportunities with Electro Web. Um, it can set screens. It's, it's it's really versatile aside from the fact that it only goes for electric moves primarily. But they have, I mean, this team has Tailwind with uh, Aerodactyl. I love Aerodactyl. They have, um, I mean, they have a Trick Room setter with uh, Hatterene that can't be taunted. Um, they have Obstacoon for that Defiant boost. Um, they have a Sun Mode with Blossom, and Blossom's actually pretty decent. Um, they have some other combos they can go for. Um, and then Araquanid is like, I think a very good water. There's so many good water types in this league, but Araquanid is a really good, ni- a nice water type. Um, also can go for the Lunge and Skitter Smacks and really be a, just a, a hard Pokemon to deal with. Um, overall, um, we gave it a, the Steam a B. Um, I think, uh, I mean, it, Sneasel's, I think your only fake out user, um, you don't have a ghost, uh, you do have a ghost type of Drac Cloak, um, but really, I'm not sure how strong Drac, Drac Cloak is, it's really more of a, a support, you know, possibly, um, I don't know, Gilmer, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jack looks at another beat up user, just like Sneasel, and and you know they, neither of them can get faked out, so it's kind of a little bit of a repeat, but it does help with the, you know round out the typings with Ghost and, and Dragon. Um, however, I think part of this is is you've got the Sun Mode um, with Blossom, but going Sun Mode I think uh, does hurt this team a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's only fire resist is Dracloak and uh, Aerodactyl, and I'm not sure that you're going to want to bring Dracloak to every game. Um, you know, you know, saying the sun um, allows you to hit uh, really the, the other teams to hit really hard fire moves into you know Cobalion, Sneasel. Does um, it a water bubble awesome. decrease fire, or no? It might. It might if you. It might if you go water team. bottle. Um, no, that maybe that. Uh, but but in the sun in, in the sun that would neutralize it so it would still be neutral against Araquanid, um, and so, um, so yeah so not so the only fire resist is really uh, if sun's up I guess is is uh, Aerodactyl and Dracloak. But the other thing is you've got um, you've got redirection with Togepi and, and Hatterene to set Trick Room. However, um, they're both weak to steel and poison, so I think uh, you know. If the Trick Room Setter wasn't also a uh, fairy type, I think that would help a little bit. Um, but but like you know, but there are some really strong threats. That's why the threat's a minus. You know, you've got you do you do have to account for um, the the Sun Mode uh, with Blossom or or just a fast Regilecki or a strong hitting Hatterene or or you know Water Bubble Rackman can hit pretty hard too. 
beat up, I don't know. In series ten, I'm I'm a little bit um, iffy on beat up strats because although Sneasel can't be faked out, Cobalion can't Dynamax, so you can just fake out the Cobalion. So even if you get the beat up off, you have a plus four Cobalion who's taking you know a free hit. So that's where uh, I'm not sure that um, it'll be as useful, um, but you know, feel free to prove me wrong. I think I think it should be interesting. Um, but so so I mean, overall, uh, solid squad B. Um, I, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. You know, I I haven't used Blossom that much, so I don't know how um, useful it will be in this sun mode. Um, but uh, I, I think there's there, there's definitely some some strong uh, mons here, and same with Hatterene. I think Hatterene was a lot better in Dynamax. I don't know how it'll be able to uh, you know work outside outside of uh, Dynamax and non Dynamax meta. But interested to, interested to find out here. Yep. So uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next team. So this team should be number. Are we on sixteen yet? I think that was sixteen. I, I can keep the list up. Yeah, do that. Yeah, that was seven. That was seventeen. Okay, seventeen. So we're uh, we're on to sixteen, and this is Toots team. Subbox so, weekends. Um, give me want to talk about this one. Sure. So I think uh, <clears throat> I think this team is really uh, they, they, they seem kind of annoying to deal with. They seem very defensive. Um, so you've got. Uh, three inner focus uh, Pokemon here, plus a ghost type. Um, so fake out might not be as useful here. Um, I mean, Umbreon, Cresselia, those are two extremely difficult mods to take down. Even Suicune's pretty bulky. Um, and you've, you've got, so you've got a uh, pretty consistent Trick Room mode with uh, uh, Cresselia or um, or Whimsicott. And then you've got Tailwind with Whimsicott or Suicune, and Suicune can't be faked out. You got some. You got some nice synergy with uh, Manectric um, as Lightning Rod, covering for the flying and water types. the The only th- uh, issue here, though, is I think the threat level is uh, is just a little too low. Um, I think having some some harder hitting Mons would be a little bit more helpful. I think this team's a little too defensive. Um, you know, Moltres and Lucario are kind of your strongest hitters here, which. Um, I don't consider it to be super threatening, although, um, you know, that, that, I, I could be wrong. I, again, um, you know, I'm I'm evaluating this based on, uh, you, know, you know, a non or a Dynamax meta. Um, you know, in, in non Dynamax, a defensive team like this might actually be uh, a much better team, and so this B rating might not do it justice. Who knows? But um, just, just on paper, even in a non-Dynamax meta, it feels like it's a little too defensive. It is a super defensive team. So a couple of things that I noticed about Toots' uh, team here. Um, I think he has every type except for Bug and Dragon. I'm not sure. How many types in Pokemon are there? He has 16 different types on this team, which is... So he, so and he, he has he no Reaper types, uh, which is insane. So he does have Dragon with Flygon. Oh, he does have dragon. Okay, so he does not have bug. Um, yeah, you're right. He, I, th- I thought there were two that he didn't have. I'm not sure. He, he doesn't he, have a steel. Or no, he does have a steel. He, he has um, a lot. He doesn't have a bug, and I think that's. I don't know. Um, he, you have a lot of different types. You have a bug. You, or, uh, you have a rock. You have a ground. You have a water, fire, a grass, electric, fighting, ghost, dark, psychic, normal. I mean, you have a fairy. I mean, you have a. Yeah, he, and he doesn't have any duplicate typings, which is really nice. Oh. Um, ice, bug, bug and ice, oh, which I think are those usually, are the two. Bug and ice, which those are usually considered are, not very good types. So. Debatably, like so, as far as like typings, I mean, this team's insanely good. Um, but yeah, I do think it is it, the, the threat level is lacking here. But what I will say is, this has to be the easily the most reliable tailwind setting team in the, in the draft. I mean, Suicune and Whimsicott, like this team's gonna tail the dang tailwind. Toots, you went with the tailwind again. Dang it! I have hmm. darn tits. right, which is tailwind. Well, <laughs> which is why I think if he had a, I think if he had a really strong, um, you know, hard hitting uh, mon to utilize in this tailwind. Um, I, th- I think that would be, um, you know, for example, like like a Galarian Darmanitan or something like yeah, that. Yeah. 
Um, just just something that could, or, or a Dracovish, you know, something that just hits the field and absolutely smokes things. I think with how consistent his tailwind is, uh, having him on like that would really round out this team uh, yeah. well. But I yeah. agree. And uh, quick shout out to Umbreon because Umbreon is amazing. Um, next team. Uh, I'll take this one. This is the Crushing Sil Valleys. Um, this team, we versatility was its lowest score. And I think we, uh, we mainly did that just because it, it does have a really strong electric mode, like really strong electric mode. But it does it has three electric types, and I mean aside from that, some of the offense is kind of lacking. Like, I mean, Landers is obviously it, it all it also it also yeah it has I was gonna say it has triple intimidate, which seems a little bit like overkill. It can be overkill unless you're going for a team without competitive and a lot of physical attackers. Then you're just it's just horribly annoying. Um, but yeah, as far as the versatility, I mean, not a super. I mean. I guess it can be strong in Trick Room, but then again, like, you know, who do you have? Garbador and uh, uh, Vikavolt in Trick Room? I mean, it's, um, I don't know, the, it is a really threatening team, I do, but I do think the, depending on which Pokemon you have, and uh, if you have some Pokemon that match up well into this team, that could really be a problem for it. Um, like a really strong ground type, you know, Landers is not going to hit that. I mean, um he does have the Vaporeon, but uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, you do have the Levitate with Vikable, which is nice, though. Um, but yeah. And you know, if, if Gumu was evaluating this team, he would, uh, you know, he would rip on the fact that not only do they not have a Grass type, but they don't have a Fire type either. So you know, yeah. they're they're missing two parts of that core. They are missing two parts of that core. They have they do have a, what is it? What kind of core is it? The Mist? I don't know what kind of core it is. The Dragon Steel Fairy. They have that with two Pokemon. Um, oh yeah, that's the. Um, I mean, it's the fantasy, fantasy core. Fantasy I think. core, yeah. Which I, I think we should should take the time to say that cores are not necessary in draft. Cores are a nice reference, like they're a nice guide to picking a, a good switch ins for each other and and being versatile. But if you your team doesn't have a core, that does not mean it's necessarily weaker. I mean, because if you have a grass type and a water type, you know. You don't have that switch in for your, uh, I don't know, um, you know, you don't, you can't, you don't have that switch in for a grass type, which, is, you know, you switch in a fire type and do damage. I don't know. Whatever. That's a horrible example. But, um, I mean, you can cover other Pokemon switch ins without getting cores. So I don't think it's a huge problem. Um, but yeah, we do see this, this team lacks a little bit of the typings, uh, that they could have had, um. To make this draft a little more versatile. Overall, B, good draft. Scary. If your team's weak to electric, you do not want to play this team or you probably lose. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's move on to, I believe this is number 14, right? I will horrible confirm that for you. I'm horrible. Like, gosh, I forget good. after every single team. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, we're on 14. <laughs> okay, so we're going on to 14. We're on 14. 14. Yeah. All right, Coomer. So, um, I think th th this team is, is really interesting. I, I like a lot of the Mons, uh, especially individually. I think there's some, there's some decent combos here. Um, I think the one thing here um, is, is that each Mon uh, seems a little bit linear in what they do, um, besides maybe uh, Tornadus and its Prankster. Um, like, Rillaboom, extremely threatening, obviously. But... Um, but a little bit uh, linear in, in what it does. Um, same with just a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, Mons, um, Doughblade, uh, Crustle. Um, actually, Crustle has a little bit of versatility, but, but uh, I mean, you know, Halucha is almost always going to be utilizing Unburden. Um, and, and so I do like that combo as well. Um, it's, but I feel like there could be, uh, like, the versatility in, in 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 each individual mon I think is a little bit low on this team, but I think the versatility in what mons get brought for each game, uh, and and you know you could bring any 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 combo of these, um, and so so there are a lot of different combos you could do, um, and that's why I like the synergy. So I think there's a lot of synergy here. Well, I think the I think the versatility, um, each each mon um, sort of sort of. You know, you know what it does, basically. 
Um, and, I, you know, that, that also might be because I haven't used all of these mons. Um, I've used a fair amount of them, though. Um, and I think the, the you know, the M board should definitely prove me wrong if that's the case. Um, we all want to prove that we're wrong. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I do like I do like some of the combos here. You know, you got Raichu with um, a good water type Lapras and a good flying type uh, Tornadus. You've got the Unburdened stuff. Um, you don't have a super consistent Trick Room mode, um, but, you know, the Tornadus is super scary with uh, Prankster. Or I, I'm interested to see uh, how those the, the Genies do with their Define abilities, how, how often they get brought out. I think that'll be interesting. Um, I never, uh, I never played pre Dynamax, so I don't know. I, I feel like they were less common, though. I feel like m most of the time they ran Prankster in, uh, in the normal BGC. But that's just that's just what I hear from the. Uh, I could see uh, the chatter. I could see some def defiant tornadoes coming out of this team. Prankster's obviously amazing, but I could see some defiant coming out too. Uh, Rillaboom mm -hmm. Rill Rill Halucha is like an amazing combo. I had it on my very first draft team ever, and I loved that team so much. Uh, that's a, such an awesome combo. I really want it. If I was first up raw, I would have gotten really boom. I really, I think it's amazing. So, not surprised you got it. Um, if this was a Pokemon Unite team, it'd probably be S plus because it has a crustal. So, I will say that. <laughs> we love a crusty. I crab. should have taken that into account. Yeah. What was I thinking? <laughs> that, that, <laughs> the threat level just got bumped up to A. Um, if if you if you play crustal now, you you can only run Shell Smash and X Scissor now. That's all. That's all you get to run, and it's OP. Um, okay, next team. Tok uh, Tokyo Terrors. Awesome logo, by the way. Um, this team, super threatening. I mean, Zergatry, I think highest special attack in the game. Um, you have a, a Glacier, who's just, we all know Glacier's amazing. I, I think it'll still be good, even though without a Dynamax uh, format. Diggersby is just obscenely powerful. Arcanine is can, Arcanine can go physical or special is super threatening. Riolu with the coaching is super scary. There's a lot of combos on this team that like can can make one Pokemon just run away with with a game. Um, I also really like their Trick Room mode, um, which is why they're uh, they got a pretty decent versatility rating. They don't really have I don't think they have Tailwind, and their team is fairly slow. But they have Fake Out, and they have really reliable... I think this is the most reliable Trick Room setting team, being that they have Slow King, who can avoid Taunt. with a, I think it's Oblivious, so it can ignore Taunt. And then Mimikyu, um, who can still be Taunted, but it ignores... You know, it can't be Faked Out. So, really reliable Trick Room team. Um, I think this team it, it can do a, a lot of things. Um, it might lean a lot on the Glacier, Zerka Tree, and Arcanine. I'm not sure, but we gave it a B plus. It, it looks like a scary team, um, very threatening, which is why it has a high threat level. Um, Goomer, anything to add? Yeah, I think uh, I think the one thing uh, when I look at the team that, that a little bit confuses me is maybe the Pikachu. Uh, they might have been going for a fake out, I guess, but. Um, Pikachu and Zergatry, obviously with Lightning Rod, you wouldn't want to necessarily absorb the Zergatry. Um, so there's that. Um, and then also, um, this team doesn't have a Flying type, so it's not like you're trying to Lightning Rod that away. Um, I guess you do have the Slow King as a Water type, um, but Slow King's you know, kind of bulky enough, so you don't necessarily need to redirect those electric attacks. Um, I mean, it's nice, obviously, but you again, you have to bring a Pikachu as one of your four Pokemon. So, um, I don't know. Um, it, the Pikachu kind of is, is pretty interesting to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, this team is, is very threatening. You know, when you see this team, like you said at the beginning, like you see Diggersby, Glacier, um, uh, Circuitry, like those just pop out as like huge threats that you have to account for. Yeah, if you let those Pokemon start attacking and, and you don't, don't kind of control the, the battlefield, you're going to get. You're gonna get hurt. Okay, I think we're I think we're on a number twelve. <laughs> we're the worst at this. We we might we could very well be in the top ten. No, <laughs> uh, where we, no we are on number twelve. Okay, so we're, we're no yeah we're on number twelve. Okay, we're so, number twelve. So number twelve. All right, halfway there. Goomer, take it away. This is probably just. You know, it's, it, I actually didn't even know that this team was ranked number twelve. I think that's kind of funny, 
because I feel like this team is just such a solid team. That's why I got B pluses across the board. You know, I, I, I think it's, um, I don't know that there's anything that stands out as like super, um, you know, crazy threatening, like, like we saw like with that terrain electric mode and, you know, stuff like that. But yet it's still very, you know, just, you know, very good and a quality team here. Um, you know, with the synergy, you've got a lightning rod, uh, use your token tomorrow. You've got a good, good water type of any good flying, uh, braviary. You've got braviary defiant to cover for any sort of, um, uh, intimidate stuff. Um, you do have trick room modes, although um, not great trick room abusers. Um, uh, there's there's prankster, there's the unburdened thievil, uh, the wheezing. I don't know that any of these abilities you would want to necessarily cancel out, but it, it's a very defensive pick. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I think. I think Thiebel gets beat up for Terrakion. Um, and then um, I always say one thing is the, the, the Wigglytuff, I don't know how useful it's going to be. You already have a Fairy. You already have a Normal with uh, Braviary. Um, Frisk is an interesting ability, um, but you already you also already have Competitive, or you have Defiant with Braviary, so you already have Intimidate, um, you know, uh, Immunity. So I'm not sure that you need the Competitive there. Um, but like, you know, like Rotomo, Quality Mon, Chandelure, Super Threatening, um, you know, uh, what was it, one, is it 145 special deck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my super gosh, strong. yeah. That, 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 and, and, and can't be, and, and I mean, can't be faked out. That's, that's really, really nice. Um, so I think there's a, like, this is, this is just like such a quality, you know, lots of variety of typing too. I like that. Um. Yeah, it's a quality team, um, and I'm really interested to see what they do with it. Um, th there's a lot of different directions they could take it. Yeah, I, I like teams like that that are just, you know, th there's a lot they can do with it, and you don't really know exactly what to prep for. Um, I think they got some sneaky combos that I, I can I can I can see. I don't want to point them out, but there's there's some I know there's some things that this team can do. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to number 11. Rebellion. Rebellion. I like this team. You have the Zapdos, which is my favorite legendary bird from Cancer region, and then Moltres Galar, which is my favorite legendary bird from the Galarian region, whatever. And then you also have the Articuno to round it out. You got the trio. I mean, you have the, the newer Moltres, but you got all three of the birds. Uno dos tres. Um, you have the Clef Key again. I know you, you love the Clef Key. Um, this team just super solid all around. I mean, you have Trick Room. You've got like Zapdos can do so much. Moltres can do so much. They're so threatening. They're they're powerful. They they're not really that frail. Kangaskhan the most reliable fake outer because it can it can fake out ghost types. Um, I mean, you've got the Drampa that can be threatening in Trick Room, and I think we mentioned this earlier when we were discussing his team. Bronzong and Drampa look really nice together because Bronzong covers a lot of. Uh, Drampa's weaknesses, like fighting a uh, dragon and fairy, you know, they're all not great against Bronzong. I mean, fighting hits it for neutral, but then again, Bronzong can has psychic stab against those fighting types. It's really nasty. You got the Doug Trio who can earthquake uh, under all of your birds. Um, just a really cool team. Um, lots of different typings. Um, yeah, you've also you you've also got Kangaskhan, the only. Uh... Mon that's able to fake out ghost types. Yeah. And you've got redirection with Tangela. Yep, and we all know how Tangela, how bulky Tangela is, especially physically. That thing just doesn't go Oh, down. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, not much more to say. You just have a lot of tools that you can utilize, and those birds, they're going to come in handy. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see what you do. All right, number 10. That's my team. Huh? Ten Saki Moto. Uh, we might have to bump you out of here. <laughs> um. Okay, so we go back to Rebellion. I'll go back to you. This team might be better than mine. <laughs> I think I was I saying I was that earlier. Thinking. I think I was, I was saying. like. 
I was like, he has a, he has a higher synergy, but he's got a. <laughs> that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, that's the okay. viewers won't notice. Just just cut this part out, you know. It's, yeah, just cut this part out. Uh, uh, either way, either way, I'm I'm gonna mix that up. Anyways, um, so uh, I I really like this team. It's got a lot of cool mons, a lot of a lot of Pokemon that I uh, love to use. I you know I had the Mammoth Swine last time. Um, we I've used the Archaeops with you in NBC. Um, I think Turnators are a really fun mon to try out. Um. So, so I would say, um, threat level wise, uh, obviously Mind Chow is, is is really really threatening. Um, Archaeops is a super high attack stat, so that's super threatening. Um, Steely Spirit, um, Berserker is is uh, it's extremely hard, and, and Gengar's got a decent special attack and can't be faked out too, which is nice. You know, you've got you've got two inner focus mons and a, and a strong ghost type. Um, versatility wise, I love it. I, you know, I think there's good talent modes. I think there's good tricker modes. You know, variety of speed tiers. Um, you know, you've got uh, you've got vile plume for weather, although you don't necessarily have a weather setter. Um, I think with and that's with synergy. You know, you know, um, if you had a little bit better way to set weather, maybe, or if you had, um, uh, I think if you had a better steel type to work with steely spirit, that would be uh, that would be a little bit better too uh, on the synergy side. Um, you know, there, there's nothing like the obvious, you know, like the terrain modes or something like that that stands out here. Um, I think, uh, I, you know, again, Milotic's another super threatening mon that, that if set up, uh, can just destroy teams. Um, I won't mention Gumi, but <laughs> there's a, there's a story behind there. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. um. And uh, no, I, I think this is a really solid team. Um, you've got you've got a good mix of defense and offense here, and and, and speed modes, and um, yeah, I, I think it's just a pretty quality uh, team here. So I am whether it's deserving. Yeah, I am so yeah, excited yeah, to use this team. Like I was really happy with a lot of the Pokemon I got, and I just think they're like the, I wanted to try out some ones that I thought would be fun. That I thought would be uh, just really good and versatile and i think my draft last season i had cell steel and spectre and some other pokemon that i just felt like that team i had last season was good but it was like too top heavy and so i wanted a team that was not like that and i think i got it like a team i'm so excited to use all these pokemon um so yeah that's all i'm gonna say i'm, I'm really excited all righty next team Next team. Speaking of the speaking of Gumi and the old good pretzels, this team uh, is not so much scared of Milotic anymore. Um, I mean, it's got the uh, Gumi's got a good team. He's got some team some Pokemon that are really sneakily good in, um, like in in this form of draft. Um, like I think Baskin's a sneaky pick. Um, I think Cinderace, even though it, it is really good in Dynamax, I think it'll be really good here. Same with Thunder's Therian. Uh, Porygon is just a, a budget Porygon too, um, which is a really nice pick. Clefable's always good. You had a last season. I think Blastoise is actually really underrated too. Um, I think your versatility, well, it's your, it's 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 pretty high rating, A minus. Um, you got a lot of different things you can do. You got special attackers. You got physical attackers. You got intimidate. Um, you got redirection. You got trick room. You got uh, Agron is actually really good with sturdy and it's just strong. Um, threat level though, I think is, I mean, the Corsolo if it's set up in trick room can just be so disgusting. Cinderace and Thunderous are extremely extremely threatening. Delmai's super high attack. I mean, Blastoise can be threatening if it gets set up too. So I think. Just a really threatening team overall. Pretty fairly versatile. Not any like weather combos or any secret combos. Unless I mean I don't know. This is my first glance. So Gumi, I know Gumi has some plans, big plans for this team. So um, we'll have to see how it unfolds. Um, Gumi, anything? Yeah, I think uh, I think threat level and versatility are really high. Like you said, obviously that's why we rated them that way. Synergy, uh, yeah, nothing nothing super obvious and and. and uh, a, it, a lot of it just seems to depend on this Clefable, like just hard-hitting Mons with Redirection uh, or, or set with Trick Room under uh, under Porygon or, or something like that. So um, I wouldn't say that there's um, a ton of synergy in that way, uh, per se, but, but again, 
you, you've got to watch out because this this team is super threatening. I totally agree. Totally agree. All right, let's move on to number eight. Massachusetts Manitans. We have the other Thunderous. Goomy, what do you think? Or, um, Goomer, what do you think about this team? Uh, this team is pretty interesting. Uh, it's it, it, it's got a really strong uh, sun mode, um, and I think it. Uh, but but I, but I think there's there there is still some versatility there, and and also with the versatility, you've got Sovali, who is arguably one of the most versatile Pokemon um, in draft because it can take on any type that you need for a matchup, and um, one twenty stab. Uh, multi attack in in a non Dynamax format is uh, you know that that just sounds super scary. Um, again, and again, the Thunderous. It'll be interesting to see how often the genies utilize their Defiant. But as a prankster mod, it's also really threatening. You've got Redirection. Um, you do have a strong Trick Room mode with Jellicent not being able to be uh, faked out. Um, you do have a second prankster with Morgrim as well, actually, um, kind of rounding out some of the some of the typings there with with Dark and Fairy. Um, I think the Sun Mode also is really helpful for Mudsdale uh, if you don't want to get hit by water attacks. Uh, so I sort of think that's really nice. Um, I think having the ability to go uh, Trick Room with Torkoal or you know, Chlorophyll Maractus or Cherim here, uh, it would be really interesting to see how he utilizes that. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of Grab Locked, um, so I'm really interested to see how... Uh, he gets utilized this this uh this draft, um, but yeah, I mean Reunicus with Life Orb also just hits like an absolute truck, um, Magic Guard. So I I really like this team. I think it's he's got a lot of options here. Um, I I don't think he's leaning too hard into the Sun mode, um, but it uh it, it it's certainly really scary, especially with the fact that Torkoal. Um, can run a lot of different sets. It's not. It's not a standard. You know, just weather setter. It's. Um, it, it's. It's got some really annoying tools. I agree with everything you said, and it looks like the Torkoal might be the captain of this team. But there are a lot of things it can do, especially with Thunderous. Um, and I think the Maractus could could shine. I think the Maractus could shine during moments uh, on this team. I'd like to see that. Yeah. They- everyone. Everyone hates on Maractus, and it looks. But it looks really good on this team. I agree. All right, let's move on to number, I think we're at seven. Are we at seven? Are we about to be at seven? Why didn't we just put the numbers on the sides? I don't know, we should have. I think we're on number seven. <laughs> we are. Anyway. We are on seven. It okay, be, next team. shouldn't be too hard to remember here. Okay, Bristol Bewares. Number seven, but this team, I love this team when I look at it. Like, it has so many different types. Um, Incineroar, obviously, you like the probably the best Pokemon in, in VGC right now. Um, and it's always good in VGC. Uh, super versatile on a draft team. You don't even have to run Intimidate if your opponent, like, you know, you can run Blaze if you want to, if, if you don't need Intimidate or they have competitive or something. Um, Conkelder, super good. Um, I think in general, fighting Pokemon got uh, buffed in this format because they don't, their close combat is, and other fighting moves are not weakened by the the... You know, Dynamaxing and having to go for like a 90 power max knuckle. I think Conkelder is going to be really good on this team. Latios is nice as a tailwind setter. Um, they have a lot of Pokemon weak to. Uh, I mean, well, they have three Pokemon that are really weak, weak to water, like a three of their big threats. Which I guess Sandslash isn't really a big threat, but it can be It can be useful. Um, like Charizard and, uh, you know, Incineroar being two of the really good Pokemon on this team are both fire type protected by that uh, Gastrodon and the Gastrodon is is sort of hard Pokemon to deal with this t- on this team because um, they have a lot of grass type switch ins they can switch in you know uh, both their fire types they can switch in Latios they can switch in Exeggutor they can switch in uh, Orbeetle so it's going to be hard to deal with and if they don't want to screw around with weather stuff they have Licky Licky or I'm sorry Licky Tongue um, which is super bulky with the Eviolite I mean this team is just all around really good I mean they have Trick Room, they have Tailwind, like, I mean, that's why I gave a versatility A-. minus. You could also almost argue an A, but like, this team is really, just looks really good um, all around. Goomer, what do you think? 
Yeah, I, I agree with you know everything you said there. I I really like the uh, the switch ins and the, and the mind games. I think this team's gonna be really tough to deal with. Uh, I've used Prankster Live Bar before in draft. It's it's so so good. Um, and then you know just having you know like you said Incineroar, one of the best VGC mods. Having uh you know that that sun mode with either Exeggutor or Charizard. Um, I think that's really scary. Um. And, and yeah, Conf to cover the rock types too. I think it's awesome. Um, you take the te- next team real quick. I gotta run. Okay. Yep, so this team, number seven, um, you, could, you could probably argue higher, honestly. It looks so good. Um, expect big things. So, number six, going on to the Pacific Slow Bros. Uh, two seasons ago, the champion. Um, uh, this team looks so fun to use, and it looks so good. It's got Intimidate. It's got Define. It's got Competitive. It's got Redirection. Um, I, I think the one thing it's it's missing is Fake Out. I don't think you have Fake Out. If if that's kind of one of your standard checks you want to get on a team, um, especially in this format where Fake Out's really good, it doesn't have that. But I don't think I think it's okay because it's this is an Indeedy team. So I mean, usually you're not going to want to use Fake Out anyway. You're going to kind of want to ignore that. So, um, but this team it just can do a lot. There's just a lot it can do. I mean, Blaziken's really threatening against the speed boosts. I think Steelix is actually kind of sneaky. Like, if you let that Pokemon stay on the field for a little while, it can actually set up and it can actually do some pretty threatening things, especially if, like, you're going against a very physically offensive team. Steelix can be annoying. And Steel Ground is actually really good typing. Um, yeah, just, just just a lot that this team can do. Jolteon is an underrated. I think it was a, a lower-tier Pokemon, but um, super fast. Uh... It just strong electric type, and it's got the seeking with the lightning rod. You could do some sneaky stuff there. Um, if you find out, I don't know if there's any rain setters on this team or like Pokemon that get rain dance. There probably are, but if you could get that up, that could be really sneaky too. Um, yeah, just a really, just a really well-rounded team with a lot of threats. That's why we give it a threat level A minus. Um, specifically, the the Prime Arena, the Blaziken. I mean, indeed, expanding force is not weak. Um, you know, you got Bisharp with it. it that thing could be nasty. Um, yeah, just really versatile. They're, they're, at, at one point, I think, like, looking at this, like, the top six or seven Pokemon on this team, it looks like one of the strongest teams. And, it, I mean, it is one of the strongest teams. But I think if it had some better lower-tier picks that sort of fit some more niche aspects that this team could fill in, like if they had, I mean, I don't even know, honestly. I mean, maybe if they did have a fake-out Mon or, or something else, um, or just a couple of the threats on their lower tier picks. I think this could be like close. It's close to the best team. So, um, I mean, they have tail room, they have trick room. They just have a lot that they can do. And we know auto preps like like a maniac, and he, he's gonna pull out some wacky stuff that we're all gonna be like, oh my gosh, holy crap! He just one v four with a weakness policy, uh, almost star. How do you do that? It's just because it's auto, and he he knows how to use a team, and I know he's got big plans. So. Um, all right, we're going to move on to number five. I remembered. My memory's going back. I'm not old. Um, this. The top five. You want to take this one? Yeah, but this is just a solid team. Yeah, the, this team, when I initially Sweet. looked at it, I was actually going to rank it lower. Mm-hmm. And then and then I, I started to, to think about it more, and the, the more and more I looked at it, the more I was like, wow, this team is actually uh, really, really um, kind of annoying. And so, obviously, you've got the Coffee Gigas, which I don't think is as good without Dynamax, but I still think it is, uh, you know, pretty threatening. You know, you can't just discount, uh, you know, Gigas's attack. And Weezing, or sorry, Coughing, shutting down those abilities is still pretty uh, annoying for the other team. Um, in addition, um, you've got the Comfe, which is, uh, you know, you can use offensively or, you know, with Floral Healing as well. Um it's it's really strong. Butterfree is super annoying with compound eyes and sleep powder, and it's uh you know and again you can just use rage powder stuff or tailwind, uh, even for more speed. You got the hail mode too, which I think is really really cool. Um, somebody use utilizing hail here, um, and I uh, uh, I I think you've also got double ghost here with dragonbolt and. Um, Dustnor and Dustnor with Frisk is an excellent Pokemon in draft. Figuring out your opponent's items can be really, really useful. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. I think the ability um, to not be faked out um, 
with those spawns and, and you can either go fast mode or slow mode with, with trick room is really scary. Um, and again, if you know if you don't bring fake out, then you know maybe you have a, a Fletchender in here who's just gonna um, throw up a tailwind. Yeah. Um, and I think Caparaja sheer force and with its weight moves is a lot better in a non dynamax format as well. Agreed, definitely. Yeah. That's something that yeah. might be not talked about enough is that weight moves are weight moves are back and weight moves are good. Um, yeah, first impression. This team looks wonky, and then you think about it, it has some crazy synergy and has some crazy uh, things it can do. I think in the in the hands of the right coach, this team looks like something that could be really hard to deal with and could do really well. All right, I agree. Number, I think we're on four. I think we're about to get yeah, because this is because we have four teams that are rated a, at the A, A rank. Um, this team, um. This team has a really nice threat level. We give it an A, mainly because, uh, I mean, the... Tapabulu actually hits really hard, even though its speed tear isn't great. It can actually just whack if you let it wood hammer. It's just going to do so much damage. Um, Corviknight, you let that thing set up or go for a tailwind. It's super annoying. Uh, the the Lego though, is so threatening. I mean, if you if you throw that Pokemon in with Gothitelle and you shadow tag it with some Pokemon that don't want to go against a fast rock type, that thing's going to destroy and it's going to get beast boost, and it's going to be insane. Um, I think Girder is a really sneaky lower pick. I really like that pick on this team. Um, with Eviolite, it's super bulky, and it can just it can set up. It can be more supportive. Um, I really like that pick. Um, and then, I mean, uh, this team is just really well-rounded. Like, you could see all these Pokemon being used in different ways, and and I, I wouldn't have any clue which six is going to be brought if I was going to go up against it. Um, you know, I'd expect the Nihilego because it's so strong and maybe the little Persian because it's such a good support, but like any of these other Pokemon are viable in their own way and it, it makes for a really versatile and really nice team. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think um, having the uniqueness of Gothitelle or the Gothitelle line is, uh, mm -hmm. is, is really, really cool on this team. Uh, Alolan Persian is re a really good support as well. Um, I think this team has an excellent balance of support and offensive mods, as well as uh, some, you know, mods that can do, you know, both roles actually, um, such as potentially, you know, like a Stoutland or a uh, or or Corp Knight. You know, I, I kind of wish the War Turtle was, um, maybe, I mean, because you already have Fake Out with Gothitelle and Below the Persian, so you don't necessarily need more Fake Out. But um, I can, I mean, I guess I can see with Eevee Light being a bulky water, water that can also be annoying, but. Um, uh, but again, you know, Marowak too, with uh, you know, uh, lightning rod to cover Corviknight, or even, um, uh, and then then being able to earthquake under it for free. I mean, that's that's a really scary combo as well. So I, uh, yeah, I just think this this team, um, like, it's so you know, being trapped next to a Neolego versus a Corviknight is is very very different. So you need to you need you need to choose your leads very correctly against this team, and I think that's why it's so threatening. Yeah, it, it, I, like, I love War Turtle, but if that War Turtle were a Blastoise, this team would be bonkers. I mean, yeah, I, there was at one point looking at this team, I thought this might be the best. But, nevertheless, we put it at four. We put it at number yeah, four. Yeah, I mean, all, and, uh, all these teams are so close. They're so tough to rate, like you said. They really so. are. Literally, I mean, honestly, all the teams. It's like, there are so many good drafts. Um, number three, take this one, Goomer. Yeah, so uh, we're already seeing uh, one of the Urshifus now. Um, we've got uh, a lot, a lot of cool combos on this team. There are so many things you can do. Uh, I really like it. I think Aromatisse is really interesting uh, with its, with its. Uh, I think it's a unique ability. Arom or no, no, it's. I don't know. I don't know that it's unique, but it's um, um, just the ability to not be able to be taunted and have Trick Room is really, really useful. Um, and, and then having the Psychic Terrain with Ndidi, um, so you can't fake out next to a freaking Urshifu, and you can't protect. Uh, and so you can just get Expanding Force and Surging Strike. It's like, you know, you, you're just done. And, and on top of that, the fact that any of them could be Zorark, um, I mean, that just makes it all the more okay. scary. Um, and and you've, got, so you've got Redirection, you've got Unburden, you've got um, Torcat, who's... Um, are, you know, extremely good in this format with uh, Intimidate and Fake Out and Cycling with Parting Shot. I mean, that's just phenomenal. 
Yeah, and then I mean, it has this team has me also with competitive. It's got it's got so many tools, and it's uh, it's got a it's got a nice trick room mode, but it's also got a really reliable tailwind too, which I think is nice. And um, I'm excited to see what happens with the Zorark because I almost I almost drafted that mod honestly. I think it's super cool in this format, and I don't know, it just oh, it's just gonna be hard to deal with. Like you're gonna go up against this team, and if he just brings it, if you don't know what six Pokemon to bring the team preview. He's just gonna bring. He's just gonna bring Zorark and just make you sweat because you're like, oh, I can just fake out the Urshifu, and it's it's just a stupid Zorark and it'll I don't know, and then I don't know. And there's just a lot of th things you can do, but uh, or maybe like he throws out. You might throw out. Uh, uh, it might be a Romatis, and then you know he might think it's Romatis, so he's not taunting it. But then he has another Pokemon that's setting up something else because they're not being taunted because you think a Romatis is actually out there. I don't know. Crazy, crazy, crazy things that can you can do with that Zorark. Um, number two, the second best team according to our dopey ratings, um, the Brisbane Blazikins. This Pokemon or this team's threat level is like wacko, mainly because of the Town Flame and the uh, Darmanitan and the and the uh, Landorus. But yeah, this is I think this is the only uh, A plus. Uh, threat level rating in the out of all the drafts just because like Talonflame can it's just such a good support for s hyper offensive teams and Darmanitan and with Sheer Force and Landris with Sheer Force are gonna whack especially with like in Tailwind and and with no Dynamax where they can't get that extra bulk I mean you're just gonna whack with those Pokemon and then uh, on top of that it's got you know and you have it's got a nice water switch in for both of those which is Rotom um, I mean, they have a sand mode that can go with um, Lycan Rock, who's underrated and very powerful rock type. Um, Buzzwool, if you get that thing going, Buzzwool could be so good. Drain Punch and Leech Life. I mean, and then the lower tier picks here are, are, are really good. I mean, you have Lorantis who can set up, you start doing superpower, can be can boost up its stats. Um, it has redirect. We have redirection with Togetic. We have Lopini can actually do some sneaky things, I'm not going to say. Um, but I actually think that Pokemon's very underrated and a great pick. I think it's an E tier. Nice ear to your pick. Um, yeah, Goomer, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, this team has such, such strong threats. I mean, you could uh, you could very well see these games end in, in a couple turns uh, if you don't prep well. Um, I think I think Lorantis is a sneaky pick, actually. I like Lorantis um, a lot. Um, being able to go physical or special, and, and Contrary is a nice uh, counter to Intimidate as well. Um, and yeah, I think this team is is extremely scary. Um, just the fact that it can go super, you know, hyper offense, or you know, or a little bit of you know slower and play redirection. Um, it, it, it's extremely scary, and and also it it's um, its threats are different uh, types as well. You know, you you got Darmantan, uh, and and then you've got. Um, Landorus Incarnate and Buzzwool, who all have a lot of a lot of various different typings, physical or special, um, and and so I just I just love all of all the power on this team, and uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be really tough to face this. Uh, sorry for whoever's in their division. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, um, and the number one team that we decided on is actually the Norwegian Darmanitans. Um, go, you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think this team is phenomenal. Again, you've got another second terrain Urshifu combo, um, and this this one's Urshifu Dark. Um, you've you've got Unburdened stuff again. You've got actually a second terrain setter, but you've also got got uh, a Gothitel line. So not only um, could you you know not be able to fake out Urshifu because of psychic terrain, but you might be trapped in there with Urshifu and you can't protect, and uh, and you could be faked out. So. Uh, so that's uh that's fun, um, and you've also got you know, you've got some inner focus. You've got good ghost type uh, stall with uh, Corsola and then like Red Rock. I mean, you know, never mind trying to figure out how you're going to beat Nurse Fu. You've got a Red Rock there too, um, and then uh, you know having some good combos with the uh, with the Tapu uh, Lele as well, like with with Starmie, um, and then again. Like, you also can't discount Nidoking, who can go physical or special, which you're going to have to figure out during the game, and can just hit, like, an absolute truck with uh, Sheer Force Life Orb. So, um, yeah, this team um, also actually has an A-plus threat level. But it's, uh, 
Um, it's just, uh, you know, I don't even know what you would do against this team. Um, it's it's uh, super, super threatening and, and difficult to deal with, I think. Um, so I, uh, I commend anyone who can figure that out. <laughs> And we know Klopsi is a monster of a player, so it's just going to be, that's going to be tough. Um, well, and that concludes kind of uh, the power rankings. We got the list right here. Um, if you want to reference this, you can see where you are ranked. Um, I wouldn't take any, like I said at the beginning of the video, I wouldn't take any of these personally if you were rated low. I mean, Bolton Bashers right here with Goomer was rated low. He didn't, didn't like his draft too much. Um, it's, it's week zero. doesn't really matter, so... Um, definitely go ahead, get some wins, prove us wrong. Uh, I mean, these are just our whatever opinions. And I, I think a lot of these drafts are really, actually really good. And I don't think the difference between, you know, number one and number 24 is honestly that much. I think there's just so many good drafts. We have a lot of good teams. It's going to be really competitive. I agree. And I think, I think it's, I think, um, there's a lot to figure out both in the sense that, um, we haven't had series 10 without restricteds and, uh, on top of that, it, this is draft, so it's not even like normal VGC. Um, so there, there's a lot of layers to analyze and figure out, and um, so these, you know, these ratings could be totally off. But yeah. this is uh, this is what we're this is just based on your team. Uh, so hopefully we'll get into week one. We'll see some play. We'll rearrange, shuffle these these around, and uh, uh, you know get some new power rankings next week. Um, good luck to everybody. Um, except uh, the Crescent Savalis, <coughs> who I'm playing. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that wraps us up. Sorry, this is a little long. Uh, we'll try to do these power rankings. We'll try to be consistent this season with doing a, a power ranking videos probably every week, but uh, and we'll try to make them quick and, and fun to watch. So, all right. Good luck to everybody.